Welcome to Enter the Unknown, your one-stop shop for answers to questions that you were never bored enough to ask. My name is FJ, and today I'm headed to Unova to answer another new question. Can you beat Pokemon Black using only Durant? You may be wondering, why Durant? Let me tell you a story. The year was 2019, and I'd just hit a thousand subscribers. I posted a poll to see what generation you all wanted to see a challenge video in, and 5th gen won comfortably. I needed a little inspiration though. I went to the comment section on my Azuril challenge to take some notes and appreciate all of your lovely messages. Eventually, I found a suggestion for the 5th gen games, and it seemed like an interesting idea. Using a Durant with Hustle will provide a challenge as the ability ups attack but lowers accuracy, while allowing me to use one of the more underappreciated Pokemon from a generation filled with great ones. And Garbodor. Durant does have much higher stats than any Pokemon I've used in a challenge before though, so I'm going to try to stay at a reasonable level. All of the usual rules apply for this challenge, now let's get going. I wasn't thinking too hard when I inserted Durant into the game, but replacing Oshawa was probably the median option. If we'd substituted Tepig for Durant, then our friends wouldn't have been much of a challenge. By taking out Oshawott, Bianca will have a Pokemon with quad effective moves, and Sharon will have one that we've got super effective moves against. I had to reset quite a lot before I got a half decent Durant with Hustle for its ability, but eventually we got this impish girl with solid defenses and decent attack and speed. The battles with Bianca and Sharon are very simple affairs. Durant wipes out Tepig and Snivy without taking any real damage. I guess that's what happens when you start a challenge with a much more powerful Pokemon. When we get the chance, we nickname our Durant Bala, and then head off to Accumula Town. Once we get there, we're treated to an over-the-top speech from Getsis before meeting a mysterious stranger named N. He's listening to our Pokemon's voice and decides to challenge us to a battle. As we've learned Fury Cutter and his only Pokemon is the Dark-type Purloin, this battle is another easy one. But Bala's run of easy battles comes to an end just outside of Striaton City when we face off against Bianca for the second time. The Lillipop she leads off with isn't an issue. Even when Bianca uses a potion, she can't do much against Bala. Tepic, on the other hand, has learned Ember, and that's not a fun prospect. As a bug steel type, Durant is four times weak to fire. One hit takes Bala down to 8 HP, and then instead of wiping us out with a second, she uses... Tail Whip. That very luckily hands Bala the win as she lands another Vice Grip. We've made it to Striaton, so it's time to explore. Inside the trainer school, we run into Sharon who's trying to improve his knowledge while waiting for the gym to open. Wanting to test in-battle items, he challenges us to a battle knowing we aren't allowed to use them. It's not really fair, but for now, Sharon's Pokemon are both weak to bug type, so Bala can ease through the battle using only Fury Cutter. After that, we visit the Dream Yard quickly and then head back to the gym. Another thing that comes with Durant replacing Oshawott is a much easier gym battle in Striaton City. Picking that option means we face off against Silen and his Pan Sage, who's also weak to Bala's Fury Cutter. Lilypup is Silen's other Pokemon, but he doesn't put up much of a fight either. So far, Bala is making her way through Pokemon Black with ease. Beating Silen earns us the Trio Badge and sets us on our path to the Pokemon League. Before leaving Striaton, we visit the Dream Yard again and bump into Getsis and Team Plasma, who are trying to literally kick the mist out of Muna. We head them off with the help of Bianca, and then after leaving the city, Sharon challenges us to another battle. For some reason. Snivy and Perloin are still his only team members, so for obvious reasons, Bala wipes the floor with him again. We're then forced to team up with our persistent friend to rescue a Pokemon who's been stolen by Team Plasma. I promise you, there's more to this game than just Sharon and Team Plasma, although right now it doesn't really feel like it. Once we reach Nacreen City, we spend some time looking around, but when we attempt to enter the museum, N comes out and blocks the way. Once again, we're challenged to a battle with no chance to say no. Bala is just too powerful though. N can… I can't keep calling him N, he shows up way too much. Nigel can catch as many Pokemon as he wants, but he's never going to overcome Durant. Nigel goes down and we're free to enter the museum, which also happens to be the gym. The Nat Green gym leader Lenora has two normal type Pokemon, and her herdier who leads off has Intimidate. That's a real problem for Bala, who's heavily reliant on attack. Our first run at Lenora was a real struggle. We tried to rely on sand attack and luck, but by the time we knock out her herdier, we're down to 13 HP. Watchog is unaffected by our sand attack and sadly knocks out Bala with Retaliate. On our second attempt, we start out much better. 
We're running with the same strategy this time, but a bit of luck gets us past Herdier with more than half our health still remaining. This time, lowering Watchog's accuracy actually helps a bit. She misses us quite a few times, but unfortunately we spend the majority of this battle asleep. It's a close one, but Bala loses out to Watchog again. I didn't anticipate this gym battle giving us so much trouble. Our third run at Lenora is another step up as we get past Herdier after just one takedown. Sand Attack proves effective again and Bala lands a hit before Watchog can touch her. Our second Vice Grip confirms that the third time really is the charm. A critical hit ignores our lowered attack and obliterates Lenora's Watchog. Bala levels up to 21 and replaces Vice Grip with Metal Claw. The victory earns us the basic badge before our celebrations are interrupted by more Team Plasma shenanigans. Maybe this game is just Team Plasma and Sharon. They've stolen the Dragon Skull from the Nat Green Museum and we have to head to Pinwheel Forest to retrieve it. After taking down some Plasma Grunts, Bala is up to level 23. Berg's highest leveled Pokemon, Livani, is also at 23, so with quite a few mandatory battles before then, we're going to be overleveled when we face him. We're going to try to keep Bala's level down as much as possible, though. We cross Skyora Bridge, taking one small step for man, one giant leap for Antkind. Did they make that joke in Ant-Man? Or A Bug's Life? Or Ants? Why are there so many Ant movies? It's not very good, they probably didn't. Anyway, upon entering Castelia City, we have to deal with another Team Plasma scheme. Jesus Christ, they never stop. Getting a small bit sick of them at this point, but Bala has no issue wiping them out. Once we've taken them down, we can finally take on Berg in the Castelia Gym. His team of three consists of Whirlipi, Dwebble, and Livani. We go in one level higher than Berg's Livani, so we're not too overleveled. Even though Bala misses a Metal Claw right off the bat, a couple of hits take down Whirlipede. Poor Dwebble has barely even left his Pokeball when Durant knocks him out. Yet another miss starts off our battle with Livani, thanks for that one hustle. Still, it only takes two hits to take him down, even with Berg using a Hyper Potion. That very easy victory earns us the Insect Badge. Our nightmares begin again as we try to leave Castelia and Bianca shows up for a battle. As with most runs of this game, Bianca is the most dangerous and feared trainer in all of Unova. There are two things in life that Bala doesn't like. Intimidate users and fire types. In particular, she hates heat more, but all fire types rub her the wrong way. Bianca's team has an intimidate user and a fire type. Bala did not enjoy this. Herdier leads off, and after intimidate lowers Bala's attack, she says F that and lands a crit bite to finish her off before she can even attack. Who's intimidated now? For that, Bala gains a level and learns bug bite. Going into this battle, I knew Pignite's fire type moves would be an issue, but a problem I didn't foresee was Pignite's resistances. As a very original fire fighting type, he resists all of Bala's attacks. With everything going against us, Bala wasn't able to overcome the great and powerful Bianca. Before attempting this battle again, we replace Bite with Retaliate so we have something to hit Pignite with. The reason Bite was the move to go was because Durant will learn Crunch at level 31 anyway, so it would be gone soon no matter what. In our second attempt, Herdier survives our first hit and Bianca uses a couple of super potions to drag things out. Eventually, Bala's Metal Claw takes her down. This time around, we can use Retaliate on Pig Knight, but his Flame Charge still takes Bala down to 10 HP before we can land our second Retaliate. Luckily, Durant outspeeds Muna and Pansage, and Hustle cooperates for once and lets us land back-to-back -back Bug Bites. Bianca is beaten and Bala battles on through Black. I don't know what just happened. After walking like 10 steps, Sharon stops us to ask for another battle. Fortunately for us, Sharon still kind of sucks. The only thing that stopped Bala from sweeping Sharon's team was Hustle. It caused us to miss our first Metal Claw on Pedov, which I guess could be down to the accuracy, but I'm blaming Hustle. After that miss, we wiped out each of his four Pokemon in one hit. We continue our journey down Route 4 and make it to Nimbasa City. Once there, we cross paths with Norbert, who reveals he's the King of Team Plasma on a couple's only Ferris wheel ride. Maybe this game is just Team Plasma and Sharon. He challenges us to a battle, and even though he has a fire type, Bala is pretty unstoppable at this point. Norbert's four Pokemon go down easily, and the Team Plasma leader is defeated. With that done, it's probably time to check out the gym. The electric type specialist Elisa is the leader of the Nimbasa City Gym. Her team features two level 25 Emolgas and a level 27 Zebstrika. Before going into this gym, we taught Dig to Bala, but as Emolga is part flying, we can only take advantage of it against Zebstrika. This was another battle that was made close by Hustle. Crunch was strong enough to wipe out Emolga in one, and Dig demolished Zebstrika, but with missed attacks, Bala finished the battle with just 27 HP. 
Regardless of how it went down, Bala came out on top and earned us the Bolt Badge. That makes four. We spend some time exploring Nimbasa with Bianca, and eventually her dad tracks us down. He's a bit of a prick, if I'm being honest, and we're left standing five feet away while the father and daughter loudly argue in public. Eventually, Elisa shows up and calms things down, and lets us leave and avoid any more awkwardness. As we leave the city, Sharon catches up with us again, and clearly he enjoys seeing Bala crush his whole team because he challenges us to another battle. Unsurprisingly, it's yet another Durant demolition. She one-shots his whole team before Elisa shows back up to introduce us to the champion, Alder. One simple double battle later, Elisa makes the arrangements for me and Sharon to cross the Driftvale drawbridge. When we arrive in Driftvale, Clay blames us for Team Plasma escaping and tells us that we can't challenge his gym until we track them down. It doesn't take long to find them hiding inside a shipping container down in cold storage. We're forced to take down a few plasma grunts before Clay and his men showed up to lead the criminals away. The fact that they have one person for every two criminals and no handcuffs in sight probably explains how the criminals got away in the first place. The Driftvale gym leader informs us that the gym is now open and we can take him on. No prizes for guessing where we're going next. For the Driftvale gym battle, we're going in with Bala at level 34. Clay's highest leveled Pokemon is his level 31 Excadrill. With one Pokemon, it's basically impossible to stay under leveled, so this was as good as I could do. This battle wasn't difficult. Not at all. Crocorock, Palpitoad, and Excadrill all go down in one hit. Bala is simply too powerful. I don't think the level mattered much. I'm pretty sure she would have one-shotted Clay's whole team at 31 or even 29. Clay's crushing defeat earns us the Quake Badge. That's five down, three to go. Apparently, Bianca's been stalking us because every time we destroy a gym leader, she shows up to knock us down a peg or two. What she doesn't realize is that Bala knows Dig now. When she takes down Herdier, she learns another new move, Iron Head. Against Pig Knight, Bianca gets a taste of her own medicine. She has to lose her starter to a super effective move. Dig has done its job. Once again, Bianca's last two Pokemon just serve as experienced piñatas. Bala hits them until the experience comes out without ever really worrying about getting hit back. Of course, sometimes you hit that experience piñata so hard that it swings back and whacks you in the face. Musharna whacked us in the face. For the most part though, piñatas are pretty soft, so Bala isn't phased. Jesus Christ, that analogy really got away from me. When we enter Chargestone Cave, we're confronted by Natural Harmonia Gropius. That's his actual name? According to Bulbapedia, his name is Natural Harmonia Gropius. That is not a good name. Anyway, we don't have to battle Gropia right now, that comes just before we exit the cave. As nothing else interesting occurs inside, let's skip ahead to that. Once again, Gropia has scrapped his former team members, and his new team is made up of Boldor, Joltik, Clink, and Ferrisseed. As far as things go, this team isn't much of a threat to Bala. Boldor only made it to the second turn thanks to Sturdy, Joltik can't survive through one dig, and Clink hardly makes use of its one move. Gropius has fired at Durant and missed. Again. We won't be battling him for a while, so hopefully that will give him a chance to improve. This is supposed to be a challenge after all. When we leave Chargestone Cave, we head north of Nistralton City and pick up the TM for X Scissor and immediately teach it to Bala. That gives us four 80 base power physical attacks. Before we can take on the Mistralton Gym, we have to help Skyla atop Celestial Tower. By the time we get there, she doesn't need our help. We ring the Celestial Tower bell and then head to the Mistralton City Gym. After breaking our nose, cracking our ribs and shattering both kneecaps, we drag our broken body up to Skyla for a battle. It seems ridiculous to think that one ant could take down three flying types, but Bala is special. Our body is broken, but hers is hard and steel. She can carry us the rest of the way. Another decimated gym leader, Skyla gives us the jet badge to make it 6 out of 8. Before entering Twist Mountain, Sharon finds us again and insists on another battle. Even in a matchup where we used a bug type move on Unpheasant, we still finish with almost all of our HP. Bala is just too good for Sharon. After he's defeated, Alder shows up and jumps from a high ledge to impress us. He gives us the HM for Surf, which we don't actually need. All in all, this was a completely unnecessary encounter. We travel through the mountain and make some new friends in Isirus City. Isirus City? Icarus City. Icarus City? Whatever it's called, we join a cult when we arrive. I don't completely understand what we're doing, but they do eventually kick me out when I mess up the rhythm of the group. 
We head for the gym and make our way through another series of death traps. Our reward for making it through is a battle with Bryson. The Ice-type gym leader doesn't have much of a chance here. Bala's Iron Head is super effective on all of Bryson's team members. I guess it's pretty impressive then that his Vanillish and Beartic take Bala down to 36 HP with the help of Hustle and Swagger. Ultimately, it's not enough and Bala takes out another gym leader. Beating Bryson earns us the Freeze Badge and takes us ever closer to the end of our journey. When we try to leave the gym, the Shadow Triads show up and tell us to head to Dragon Spiral Tower. When we get to the top, we find out that Gropey has freed Zekron, so that's not great. We then get sent to Nacreen City and from there on to Relic Castle. None of it is important to Bala though, who doesn't need any help from legendary Pokemon. So let's move on. For the final time, we take on Bianca on Route 8. Once we got Dig, these battles really stopped being difficult. Since last facing off with her, she's evolved Herdier into Stoutland, Pignite into Embor, and Pansage into Simisage. It's certainly not a bad team. Durant is just a really good Pokemon. As always, Hustle makes things more complicated than they need to be. In combination with Intimidate and healing items, Stoutland takes a long time to beat. Luckily, her other three Pokemon are less stubborn. Bala knocks them all out in one shot, and finally, our rivalry with Bianca comes to a close. As we cross into Opelucid City, we meet with Alder, who introduces us to Drayden, and reacquaints us with Iris. There's more chatter about an unnecessary legendary Pokemon, and then the final gym is finally open to us. It's time to slay some dragons. In Pokemon Black, Drayden serves as the Opelucid gym leader. Sadly, we are pretty overleveled at this point, standing 10 levels higher than Drayden's best Pokemon. I tried to keep levels down as much as possible, but this was as good as I could do. Bala is way too powerful. I almost feel sorry for Drayden here. His whole team goes down in one shot, and he gives up the Legend Badge to fill our case. Our final step before Bala enters the Elite Four is to take down Sharon for the last time. There hasn't been a single difficult battle with him all game, and this is no different. With Sharon down, we can ease through Victory Road and test our skills against the Elite Four. In Pokemon Black, the Elite Four is made up of Chantal, Grimsley, Caitlyn, and Marshall. In this generation, you can match them in any order, which makes for a twist that I quite enjoy. I decided to start off against Caitlyn as I figured she'd be the easiest to take down. Her psychic type team is made up of Reuniclus, Gothitelle, Sigilyph, and Musharna. At level 55, Bala isn't too overleveled for the Elite Four, but four crunches still sweep through Caitlyn's team. None of her four Pokemon even get a chance to use a move. She tells us to move on to the next member, so we settle on the dark type trainer, Grimsley. His team is made up of Scrafty, Crocodile, Lipard, and Bisharp. Scrafty gets in one hit, but Bala barely notices. Even with Intimidate, Crocodile goes down to one X Scissor. Lipard gets to use Fake Out and Aerial Ace thanks to Hustle, but yet again, one X Scissor gets the job done. Bisharp is Grimsley's final Pokemon, and she also gets two hits in thanks to Bala's ability. Durant was never in danger of losing, though. The second member of the Elite Four is defeated, and we're going after Marshall next. The fighting type specialist has a team made up of Throw, Sork, Conkeldur, and Mianxiao. Even without a super effective move, Bala tears through Throw and Sork with Iron Head. Abilities and healing items slow her down a small bit, but she beats both without taking a single hit. Conkeldur lands a hammer arm which takes Bala down to around half health. That ends up being the only hit that Marshall lands as Mianxiao also goes down to one Iron Head. Chantal is up last, and with a team full of ghost types, this shouldn't be hard. And it isn't. A team made up of Cofagrigus, Chandelure, Golurk, and Jellicent really poses no threat to Bala. All four go down to a single crunch, and Durant has conquered the Elite Four. Now, the last few bits of this game were a small bit of a mess. The footage of the original battle with Gropey somehow vanished. I didn't find out until a few hours ago when I had to go back and play through a good chunk of the game. In some ways, I'm glad, because on this run I deliberately lost my first attempt so we could do the battle with just Bala. On the first run, I let Reshiram faint, but Zekrom was recharging on the first turn with Bala, so it was just a bit unfair. This time, Bala actually ended up falling to Zoroark's flamethrower. We leveled up to 60 and came back to try again. Gropey has a full team of six made up of Zekrom, Zoroark, Karakosta, Archeops, Klingklang, and Vanillux. This is a strong team, ranging from 50 to 52 in levels, and Bala just ran roughshod through it. 
Caracosta was the only one to survive a hit, but even he flinched when Bala hit him. I spent a couple of minutes trying to decide what to do when Bala leveled up to 61. She wanted to learn Guillotine, and I wasn't sure what I did on the original run. Ultimately, we took down our rival, Natural Harmonia Gropius, and it was time to face off with Getsis. Here's where things get messy. We still had the footage from our original battle with Getsis, but now Bala will be starting this as level 60. In the redo, by not learning Guillotine, I'd unintentionally made the Getsis battle 10 times harder. So for that reason, we're going to stick with the original footage of this battle. The true leader of Team Plasma also has a full team of six. It's made up of Kofagrigus, Hydreigon, Electros, Bufalant, Seismitoad, and Bisharp. This is not a fun looking team for Bala, who has to face off against two Pokemon with fire type moves. Kofagrigus falls to one crunch, which transforms our ability from Hustle to Mummy. This time, when Durant tried to learn Guillotine, we went through with it, replacing Crunch. The timelines are officially split, and I'm just going to need you all to pretend that it makes sense. Surprisingly, Hydreigon can't damage Bala, who destroys him with one X Scissor. Here's where the guillotine became important. On our first try, Bala hit with it and wiped out Electros in one. In the alternate timeline, without a one-hit KO move, the eel burned up Bala every time with Flamethrower. I think I probably would have needed to level up to around 66 to take him down without it. That's ultimately why I decided to stick with this footage. Buffalon ends up doing a ton of damage before Durant can knock him out. We actually get lucky again when Seismitoad misses his muddy water. Finally, Bala survives Bisharp's Stone Edge and finishes off Getsis to roll the credits and beat the game. I know this wasn't the hardest challenge, but it was a lot of fun and I hope I was able to show just how much of a beast Durant can be. I feel like 5th gen has a ton of underappreciated Pokemon just due to sheer volume. Bala was awesome, and the only thing that stopped me from doing post-game was the messed up ROM. After beating Getsis, it just sent me back to the beginning of the game. That's the prize for not having a capture card. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.